Uh, did I forget to mention that uh, she carrying the choir back? <laughs> As I said earlier, this is the homecoming weekend when people come back on vacations and the kids in Sunday school are elevated to grade. We have a big picnic and everything, and it is the beginning of a new church year. And moving forward in the church year, you have a ministerial team of three people here, uh, me and Doherty, Sandra Campbell, and myself. And Miam has just advanced to a new position where she is embarking upon creating an anagram institute here at Unity Temple. Enneagram is something that's very common in many Unity churches, and they teach it out in Unity Village as well. But it's a wonderful source of spiritual enrichment and uh, inspiration to have you uh, be able to move forward and capture the life that you want to live. I think the thing that, that makes the team that we have here, Sandra, me and myself, is that we avoid the, the uh, traps that other ministers get caught up in. And there's two, basically, and that is competition and comparison. And when that enters into the, the framework of uh, ministerial relationships, it can be kind of challenging because you're looking at somebody else and thinking, wow, I'm not as good as that, or I can do better than that, I'll show her or him in their case. But we've been managed to avoid that. So I'm going to have to come out this morning and we're just going to share some information with you about uh, this church, about the spiritual principles that it's founded upon, and uh, perhaps where we go from here. So, ladies, can you come forward? <coughs> well, welcome. It's good to have you two here. No, you two don't need a mic. <laughs> you just, just need to nod your head yes. <laughs> anyway, um, in going through some of the archives, we discovered um, Charles Fillmore, uh, who he and his wife were the founders of the entire Unity movement. And we found where this church, which was the first institution in the entire movement, where they actually ordained Charles Fillmore. And we have some of the questions here that he had to take a test for in order to become an ordained minister and then go on to ordain other ministers. But there's also a lot of other interesting things about this church in particular. Uh, the architect of this church was the same person that did the Nelson Atkins Museum, did the Municipal Auditorium downtown, and did uh, many uh, great works in uh, New York City. So I bet you didn't know that when the Municipal Auditorium opened downtown, this church was the second organization to do an event there. And over 3,000 people came to hear Charles Fillmore speak. It was a half-day event, and it was, uh, had much community involvement involved in it. But I think they didn't know that. They didn't. Okay. <laughs> I bet you didn't know. Um, what do you know? <laughs> well, I bet you didn't know that in 1915, Unity's Auditorium on 9th and Tracy opened. And at that time, think about 1915. What was our culture like? What was our country like? There was more segregation than there is today, believe it or not. And as Dr. King once said, Sunday is the most segregated day of the week. It still is. And so many of us went to our churches that were like, they looked like us. I went to all black church and some of you went to the church with all white people. Well, in 1915, uh, Charles Fillmore had a following, of course, of people of color as well as Caucasians. And the people of color were used to not being able to, to go to integrated services, but they knew when they went places, even the movie theater, there was a certain section that they had to sit in. So they, the members uh, coming to that service that day who were African Americans, approached Charles, Charles Fillmore, according to the Kansas City Star, this was an article in the newspaper, and said, where do we sit? And he said, according to Elliot Meyer, one of the Unity Ministers, for whom our recent renamed Hall, Meyer Hall was named, and he was a minister here, later, uh, according to Elliot Meyer, Charles Fillmore said, sit anywhere you want. You can even reserve the front row if you like. That was very unique 
1915 in Kansas City. And that was the first church, first congregation in Kansas City that integrated in a regular church service. So that's something to be said for you. experience and now speaking outside of this community more and more that how much in a way I took for granted the way in which unity from its outset has honored women in leadership I mean there are communities that I speak to where you know women can't be pastors etc and that this church was founded unlike other unity churches this is called the temple because in, originally it was to be devoted to Myrtle Fillmore as the co-founder of the unity movement and to be honored sort of at the outset at the very foundation of the building of this in that way in a way where I think our modern world is really just beginning to catch up it's not about not men in leadership it's about that bringing forth this balance with the female voice that I think unity has known from its outset and honored from its outset. So, yeah. Thank you, really interesting. Um, when you mentioned that unity was the first one to have an integrated service without assigned seating, so to speak, uh, back in the uh, early 80s, unity was always also the first church to openly acknowledge uh, the gay community. And they came in, they started a, a group called the Land Auxiliary, and it was um, it became very big and very active in the church, and um, a lot of people took um, uh, took exception to that, and they left. But the ministers at that time stood their ground, and when the board approached the minister and said, "You know, we're losing memberships and we're losing donations. Um, we need to contain this, and we need to um, not have gay or homosexual printed anywhere." And they can meet, but under a, a name that doesn't indicate homosexuality. And they have to be more low-key. And at the board meeting, I was secretary here at that time. And I remember the minister saying, his name is Max Lasker. He says, okay, we can do that. But the first thing we're going to do is change the name of the building from unity to disunity. Because that is not what unity is. And from that point forward... <laughs> Also, there was a time, if you can believe this, not that long ago, in the 60s, when the women in this church could not be ushers, uh, they could not wear pants to church, their designated job, which was uh, a tradition handed down for decades, was to cut the crust off of the sandwiches and serve them at funerals afterwards. <laughs> well, <clears throat> as we moved into the 80s with this same minister, uh, there was a tremendous um, uh, increase in the feminine energy in the church because everybody was being liberated uh, from all of the old entanglements and restrictions that had come about through the uh, traditions. So women came in and uh, they got seats on the board of directors and pretty soon you could feel the entire energy shift. It was very patriarchal before that, very staunch, very uh, almost militaristic. And the feminine energy came in and it began to soften that. And that is when this church really began to, to grow and attract other people. And many of you who come here, uh, when you walk in, you can feel the energy in the place just because it's balanced and it's harmonious and it doesn't have a, a, a dominant uh, masculine or feminine feel. I bet you didn't know. And many of you walk away wanting to take the music home with you. When uh, Keith uh, Andrews created Play Well, he, created, he, he wrote music for it. And there are people asking for that music. But many of you want to take the music home with you. Well, I bet you didn't know that there are two CDs that our choir over the years have made. And they might be available in the bookstore. I'm not sure if we have it. But check it out if you like. Don't you love our music? And I know there's some facts about that organ that are unbelievable. You know, it's a, a unique organ in Kansas City, and uh, I don't have the facts in front of me, but I, I would suggest you research it because there's a lot about that particular piece of music, that instrument. So, Nian, 
I bet you didn't know that a former Unity Society of Practical Christianity minister, who happened to be the minister here, was in Hollywood. And his picture hangs in the Heritage Room. His name is Reverend Ernest Wilson. He was very well known in Hollywood, so well known, that he worked with Betty White, who is still living in her 90s. So we have some pictures in our archives of Betty White on the program at Unity, at Unity Society of Practical Christianity, which is our, rich, our, our origin. So, did you know about Betty White? You know who Betty White is? Golden Girls? <laughs> <laughs> you watch TV Land, that's it. Okay. Well, I bet you didn't know there's a chance that Betty White's going to come back and visit us. Oh, she is? There's a chance. <laughs> okay, let's put that out there. Betty White is coming. Pretty okay. soon she'll hear it. <laughs> well, let me ask you something. Let's go back to Charles Fillmore's ordination test. Let's just see how, how a man, the, okay. the, the sprout of the group, um, <laughs> holds up to some of the answers. And the first is, um, what is what is God? Metaphysically explained, what is God? What is God? Um, from a unity perspective, God is divine mind, like this eternal, infinite consciousness that is the very fabric of our existence, like what we're made of. So in that sense, God is in all, through all, as all, equally. And what does that mean to us? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a nice, nice philosophy, a nice theology, but what does it really mean to us? Mm -hmm. Well, what it means for me is, I mean, we've just talked about the, the amazing diversity that comprises the people who um, who attend Unity Temple, right? Like for us, there is this perspective in which it doesn't matter what your race is, it doesn't matter what your background is, it doesn't matter even what your religion is or what your belief system is. If God is all through all in all, expressing as all, then um, then there's a way in which my beholding of you is a beholding of an equal in all ways, right? Like there, there's, that there is divinity that is the essence of every person on this earth. And, and that creates the foundation. We talked about, you know, how unity is, uh, is so progressive in that way. We're progressive historically because of that essential teaching in which we believe. Yeah, so from that truth, you know, how we honor other people flows, but from that truth, actually sometimes the hardest work is how we honor ourselves, right? When we look within to go, oh wow, that which is in all through all lives and abides fully at the point of me also. Yeah. Thank you very much, very good. Um, Sandra, a lot of people get confused, uh, especially in some of the more fundamental or traditional religions, about this relationship between uh, God, uh, soul, uh, myself as a human being. Can you explain to me the interconnectedness? Yeah, of those we, three? thank you. We talked about this in our metaphysical Bible interpretation class this morning. Uh, most of us in here probably grew up with traditional religious beliefs and the belief in the Trinity, which is stable for Christianity. The Trinity represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, according to the way we were taught in Bible. But in metaphysics, Beyond the literal interpretation, the meaning personally, it's mind, idea, and expression. And so what that means, our relationship is that the God in us, that our mind, that's where things begin, that's where we create our, our experiences, our realities, based on what goes on, we decide what that means. We have a reaction to it. So we have a mind, and then we have an idea. We, we create a thought from that mind, from that God center. And from that thought, we express out mind, idea, and expression. So thoughts held in mind produce after their kind is a mantra we say in unity, but that's where that idea, mind, idea, expression comes from, that relationship between us and God is personal. <coughs> our mind, our ideas, and how we express out. Thank you very much. Um, that's all the time we have right now, but if you have any questions, please um, send them in, email them, and we'll address them as different services go on. But for now, let's just take a moment to, to go into meditation, and to relax, and make yourself comfortable.